All right, guys, so this is just going to be our real brief introduction uh, to the skeletal system. We'll talk a lot more to, over the next, really, three weeks or three weeks plus. Um, but just kind of cover some of the basic stuff, um, and let's jump into it. Okay, so uh, first of all, um, each bone in, is an individual organ. So that's, what, uh, that's surprising to a lot of my students. Uh, it means there's more than one type of tissue in each one. So we've got skeletal tissue, right, skeletal tissue. Um, there's also blood vessels run through through there, so you get the blood vessels with the simple squamous and the smooth muscle in the walls and so forth. Um, there's actual nerves that run through there. The bones hurt when they get broken. And there's nervous tissue in there. Um, so there's lots and lots and lots of bones often have bone marrow inside of them with their own tissue in particular that helps support that. So there's lots of different types of tissue um, uh, inside of each bone, which makes each bone an organ. So the whole organ system is a collection of all those bones. Right? Uh, big functions, obvious ones, uh, support, protection, okay, um, movement. So we don't actually move the, 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 the movement, the force for movement comes from muscles, but the, the joints actually kind of define the movement. Certain joints are going to open and close like a door. Some joints are going to be able to spin. Some boats, uh, joints are going to be able to um, do something called circumduction, which means to move in a circle. So that's kind of the uh, function there, okay? Um, they can serve as a mineral reservoir, especially this calcium idea. That's huge, okay? Because calcium is going to be really important for your nerves and muscles to function. So uh, if you don't eat any calcium over the course of a couple of days, you can actually take some of that calcium from the bones and actually use it for those mu uh, muscles and nerves. Um, or if you take in more than you need, you can actually store it for when you might need it later. And then hematopoiesis, that's a big fancy word for uh, blood cell formation, so your bone marrow, which is part of the skeletal system, um, produces all of your red blood cells, your white blood cells, your platelets. All right? um, in terms of uh, the division, we have a sheet that we're going to go over tomorrow, uh, tomorrow in class with this, but there are generally 206 bones uh, in total. It actually varies a little bit. Some people have a couple more bones in their skull just because of the way they fit together and so forth. Um, but in general, this is how it's broken down. You've got 80 in the axial and 126 in the appendicular. Uh, we're going to spend time tomorrow showing you that. So um, by the end of the end, we're going to do a whole lot more uh, than that. We're going to learn some of the um, features and so forth. All right? All right, so this section deals with the structure of a long bone. So a long bone is any tube-like bone. So this happens to be a femur here, one of your thigh bones, okay? Um, but the same vocab applies to the two bones that make up your forearm or your upper arm or even your finger, the bones of the fingers or the palm of your hand. Uh, they're all considered long bones, okay? Um, at the end of each bone, you have a section called the epiphysis, okay, where it swells out really to form a joint, okay? Um, there's a transitional stage called the metaphysis. I don't usually do much with that, but it's like when it start, first starts to kind of swell out here, okay? Um, the center portion, what's considered the shaft of the bone, is called the diaphysis, um, uh, and that's inside there is where you would typically find the the, um, the medullary cavity. Okay, the medullary cavity is essentially the bone marrow cavity. This is a big hollow chamber. Uh, we'll have a cow tibia that we'll look at later in this year, and you'll actually get to see all these pieces. Okay, um, at the ends of the epiphysis, you would have articular cartilage. So the end of this, where this femur is going to join up with your coxal bone, your hip bone, there would be a layer of articular. Articulation is a big fancy word for a joint. So there'd be a layer of cartilage there, um, and on the Outside of the bone, you would find a covering called periosteum, so periosteum right here. And the periosteum, you can't see in this picture very well, um, but the periosteum is this fibrous outer covering, and that's what allows um, really good attachment for your tendons and ligaments, and it also provides nourishment for the bone and the growth and so forth. And then the last piece of vocab in there is the endosteum. So the endosteum, so this is the medullary cavity inside here. So this hollow space right here is the medullary cavity. It's like a little tube going through the middle of this bone. And the wall of that is lined by the endosteum. So it's an epithelial that kind of lines the walls there. Okay? So it's a lot of vocab, but it's pretty simple stuff. We're going to do a lab on it. I think you'll be fine with it. Now, this section I do almost nothing with now. I used to do a ton with it um, in terms of vocab. You're going to see a lot of this voc uh, vocab throughout the unit. So we're going to learn a, a st uh, structure of your um, uh, that femur we just looked at called the greater trochanter. Um, and you're going to hear about like the spine of the scapula and the head of the humerus and so forth. So you're going to use this vocab, but I don't actually want you to spend the time studying this. I don't think this is worthwhile studying. Um, just keep it there as a reference. So if I mention something and you're like, ah, I should know what that is, you want to look at it, um, use this as a reference. But please do not spend time studying this. This is not worth your time. And this set of pictures just gives you an idea of what some of those things look like. So here's the head, nice rounded projection. Here's a little narrow spot called the, uh, the neck. Here's a little big, uh, a big little piece sticking off called the 
a big little piece. That's silly. Um, but a big piece sticking off the bone here called the trochanter. Um, so it just gives you some visuals with that vocab that I just told you, this list here, okay, which really is not all that important. So, um, so this is just, again, reference for you in case you need it. Here we do have some really important stuff, though, okay? So these are the cells of the bone tissue. So uh, osteocyte, osteo, anytime you see that prefix means bone, and site means cell, so that's our bone cell, our classic bone cell, um, and it's, a, it's completely surrounded by matrix. Okay. Um, the one below is called the osteoprogenitor cells, um, and essentially that's kind of like a stem cell, sort of a stem cell, um, and what it can do is it can turn into either these osteoblasts or these osteoclasts, and it really any type of uh, bone cell you might need. Um, it's your general potential to turn into any bone cell uh, that you'd like. Okay? Now, the osteoblasts and the osteoclasts are the ones we're going to spend the most time talking about. So the blasts build bone, our bone-forming cells. Uh, so what they do is they actually secrete collagen. So remember collagen from, our la uh, from the um, tissues unit. Uh, so collagen um, is this rope-like uh, string that, that, that the body uses. Um, what, and what we do is just secrete that, and then calcium sticks to it. Okay? So the calcium sticks to it and calcifies that actually makes the um, uh, the bone tissue. Okay, the osteoclasts do the exact opposite. The osteoclasts are this bone dissolving cell. Essentially, they eat away um, bone by secreting out an acid and some enzymes that eat it away. Okay, and they're like huge white blood cells, about 50 times the size of white blood cells. So they essentially drill holes through there. And we're going to talk about these in detail. They're really important in what something we call bone homeostasis and calcium homeostasis. But for now, as long as you know that osteoblasts build bone, osteoclasts eat bone, I'm happy with that vocab. And our last section that you guys got to know um, has to do with the microscopic structure of bone. So what is the bone, um, what is bone actually made up of? So remember, matrix is all the stuff between the cells, okay? So all the stuff between the cells. Um, and if, when we look at it, um, it's about 25% collagen, okay? So we got a whole lot of collagen, in, remember, remember that, okay? Um, it's uh, in some or organic salts, okay? Um, make up about 50%, so the calcium carbonates, of the, it's not calcium by itself, it's always calcium compounds, but as you're looking at, and about 25% water. Okay? Um, two big categories of bone, you got compact versus spongy, I don't know why I have two C's there, ignore one of those there. Uh, so compact versus spongy bone, so the compact bone is what you'd see on the outside of bone, it's really thick, there's no empty space in there, it makes it really strong, okay? Um, versus spongy bone, okay, spongy bone is kind of what you see here in the middle, um, and the spongy bone is more of a lighter framework. It keeps our, the weight of our skeleton down, allows us to move faster. Um, it um, also allows it to be kind of spring-like. So you can almost imagine, like, if, if I put enough pressure down on top of this, this whole thing can kind of collapse a little bit because it's not rock solid. Um, so your bones, the ends of your bones have a lot of the, the epiphysis at the ends of bones, has a lot of this spongy bone, and that allows you to um, absorb a lot of shock when you jump up and down. Okay, um, this last little note I just put in here because I didn't want people to miss it. So when you when you're studying at the end of this unit, um, this is vocab that's going to be covered in the lab. We're going to do when we look at the microscopic structure of bone, and I and just circle it, mark it, make sure that you remember to go back and look at it because I I will put these terms on the test. You're going to need to know these terms, um, and the only place they're going to be is in that lab notebook that we do. All right, so hopefully that works. Uh, we'll take questions first thing tomorrow. Have a good night.